All right, everybody, this is Ross. In today's video, uh, we're gonna do some grafting. I just did a graft onto my fig tree here. Uh, today's the 28th of April, and I think this is a really great time in the season to be doing these grafts because it's just warmer outside. That's one of the, one of the requirements, I think, for the fig and also for the persimmon is that we just have warmer temperatures in the air uh, those warmer temperatures are going to get us a good healing of our graft union. So uh, they just really won't take and they won't heal, particularly I've noticed with the fig, if temperatures are not really over 70. Today is 65 and the, the two week forecast looks pretty good if temperatures are over 60. So I'm pretty confident that we're going to have some good success here with these grafts doing them now. If you don't have those temperatures, I would wait and be patient um, because it really does come down to those temperatures. A lot of you guys, we make videos on YouTube and that's one thing a lot of people forget to mention. They talk about the graft and how to do the graft and all the things to know about the particular graft and the steps along the way, but that temperature is so, so important. So as an example, I did a month ago in early April, we did some apricot grafts, some plum grafts, that would be the time that I would do my apples, my pears, my stone fruits, because they don't need as warm of a temperature. Plus, it was actually quite warm about a month ago. So uh, we could have, and we did, we actually had some success with our plums and apricots over there. But now it's warmer, um, and it, these things that I'm grafting today, like the mulberry, the persimmon, and the fig, those just need those warmer temperatures for them to take, particularly the fig tree. Now with the persimmon, I find that they're quite difficult um, to graft. My first year I had 100% success. My second year I had very low success. And I think it has a lot to do with the, um, the rootstock itself. Now, if you guys are getting seedlings in the mail, like I have here, um, or if you're growing them yourself, is that you wanna grow them out for a couple years, preferably in the ground. That second year you can start to graft. That's what I have here is that I put them in the pot all of last year, let them grow. Now they have some width to them, some caliper. We can think about grafting these. And even this size, it's not really guaranteed for them to take. So really be patient with this. Don't rush it, especially with the persimmon. They can handle a little bit lower temperatures, I find, than the figs. But as soon as they start leafing out, these persimmon seedlings I have here underneath this low tunnel, this is the time to graft all of them. If I don't graft them now, um, I find that the chances of success goes way down. Right after the bud break, uh, we should be grafting them. And of course, with the temperatures in the forecast looking the way that they are looking right now, with temperatures above 60, plus we're getting them in this microclimate here, it's just very warm. The low tunnels are at 80 to 90 degrees during the day. We have you know all kinds of rocks and thermal mass and things in this patio that are making the ambient temperatures a lot warmer than 65 degrees like it is today. So um, it's just a really great time to be doing this. Um, so the timing's everything. Now we're gonna do the cleft graft today and it's really, really simple. Essentially, we're gonna take my <laughs> finger as an example here and we're gonna use this knife and we're gonna come down through, my, through the, the branch. We're gonna come down here like this. And we're gonna cut my finger basically in half don't cut your finger in half, but um, we're doing that right now. We wanna make a very, very straight cut. So when we come down, we wanna be very, very careful. I suggest wiggling this and coming down very slowly. There's a few ways to do it. And there's certainly like that a lot of ways to very easily cut yourself if your knife is very sharp and you're not careful. So we did that. We also have my scion wood here. And I'm gonna insert this in. I've already pre-cut this. I wanna see if this actually is going to fit well and have good contact because what you're really looking for with grafts is that you need to have good contact on the camium and there it's not really making good contact but this is sort of what i'm trying to achieve here is to get myself this very thin piece on both sides with the cleft graft you can see that the the bud is right here this is that bud we only need one bud 
And then this is going to be inserted into the rootstock and it's going to basically fit nice and snug. Now you can tell that my, let's say my finger is the rootstock, is that my finger is, has a, a longer, a wider diameter than the, uh, than the Scion. So this is not an exact perfect match. It's not um, the same diameter here between the Scion and the rootstock. So with a cleft graft, that's pretty important. But I like to do is actually put them a bit on a slant. And that's pretty extreme right there. But let's say it's, it's a slant like this. That's not too bad for the long-term health of the graft. And if you can get them both to take both sides of the graft. So as an example, let me come back in here with my finger. It's going to take up there at the top left of my finger and the bottom right of my finger. See how there's contact? Um, you know, you can imagine there's a contact point right here. And then there's also a contact point down here at the bottom on the right. So we want that cambium that's really, really important here to make contact with the rootstock. So it's a little bit easier said than done, but it really comes down to your cuts. If your cuts are straight, you're going to have a much higher success. Okay. So get yourself a sharp knife, any sort of grafting knife you guys can find. Start shaving this down. The thicker the wood and the stronger the wood, the more you can really chop at this thing. But I find that this is such a flimsy scion here that I don't want to go too crazy. I want to take my time with these cuts. The less cuts that you make though, the better. Just make sure that they all are straight. No one's a professional here. You guys are just learning. And this is probably pretty darn good. We have ourselves a very flat side on the left and on the right. And this is basically going to insert in there almost perfectly. And now the only thing left to do is to match up the cambium. And we're good to go. And that's a perfect match. So I'm going to bring you guys in closer. And you'll be able to see here exactly what it is that I'm doing. Because it's really, I, I know it's really in the details here, guys. There we go. So we got that to focus for you. And you can see that if you look really closely, there is really good contact on this side of the graft and also on this side of the graft. You need contact on both sides for a cleft graft. If you don't, in the long run, you're going to regret it. Your graft is going to be weak and uh, there's a good chance of breakage in the future. Now what I'm doing now is getting my rubber band because we need to rubber band this to strengthen the graft union. And we need to get ourselves some parafilm um, to then wrap the graft union and also the scion because that's going to keep in all that moisture. And I'm just coming in here with the rubber band and this is creating, helping us get better contact and also reducing our chances of breakage so that we can have that healing process go over well. And then I'm going to tie this off. And that is that. Now we get our parafilm. This is the most important thing any of you guys can have as a fruit tree orchardist. If you're growing fruit trees, you need parafilm. And also, you really should know how to graft. So you're kind of taking the right steps here. We're just coming around and we're stretching this parafilm and then we're wrapping. We stretch, then we wrap. We stretch, then we wrap. And this is gonna create the good wax contact that we have in the parafilm to the wood to keep in all that moisture so that this doesn't dry out. If any portion of this dries out, we will not have success. So there it is, there's our graft. The only thing last left to do is actually to label this. I have some plant tags here. We could write on them 
and uh, label what they are and stick this in the pot so I know. But I don't need to do that because this is all Honan red here, all these graphs. But anyway, um, that's, that's it, guys. That really is a pretty simple graph to know. Um, I'd recommend, as I said to all of you guys, is learn a graft, stick with it, don't forget it, and practice. Try some varieties and things that you don't necessarily uh, need or like, and then you can do it for the real go whenever you guys want, and uh, you'll have success that way. You know, practice, practice, practice. It really is though, if I could give you guys any tip, it's about the temperature, the timing, and that cambium contact. If you get those three things right, doesn't matter how you do this, what graft you do, what fruit tree it is, if you get those three things right, you're gonna have success. So thank you guys out there for watching this one. Uh, if you wanna see more grafting videos that we've done, we've done a few in the past, um, check those out. We'll see everybody soon. Check out our blog, figboss.com, and I will see you guys for tomorrow's video. Take care.